Hey Heart fans, what's up? Butch Hartman here. Thanks so much for coming to the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, don't forget, I am doing commissions now. What are commissions? That means I am doing drawings for you. That's right. If you guys want me to do a drawing for you, like maybe you and Timmy Turner playing volleyball with Cosmo and Wanda, or maybe you and Danny Phantom surfing at the beach or something like that, or maybe, hey, you know, one of your own characters, you want me to draw it, or maybe it was your favorite superhero that you like from Marvel or DC, anything like that at all, just let me know. The link is down in the description, so check it out. Hey, today we're talking about why I was fired. No! Here's why I was fired from my very first ever animation job. And why did I get fired? And how can you avoid the same mistake? Well, let's check it out. So here's the deal. I was at CalArts. I went to CalArts uh, in 1983. I got there when I was 18 years old. I went there for three years. I studied character animation in the character animation department. What a twist. I learned a lot, had a great time. We had to make short films every year. Every year, for the whole year, we were assigned to make one pencil test. Now this is back in the 80s, so the video equipment we had wasn't really super great. It was just, we would basically shoot our pencil drawings of animation under a camera and film it like animation. Now they have all these fancy computers and everything, and you can really do a lot more stuff with animation. Unbelievable technology. But back then, it was just straight up pencil test, and it was really fun, and we, and we could put music to it if we want. Second year, you could put sound to your film. First year, it was just straight up silent. Second, third, fourth, you could do uh, sound and all that stuff. So here it is, the second year of CalArts. I've uh, already done my first year film. My second year film, I do it. It's got a soundtrack. It just has some music under it. And to me, that was a very big deal. I put music under my pencil test. A lot of, lot of work to go into that as you're getting your head around how animation works and how sound works with film and animation, you know, it was really fun. Anyway, I show my film, and every year at CalArts, they had this thing called a producer's show, where at the end of the year, we'd have a big show where all of our films are being shown, and these producers from Hollywood would be invited, like animation producers and movie producers and things, and those that actually came to the show, there was a potential they would hire you. They would like hire you to do a job, and it'd be like, wow, the whole reason we're going to this college, and the whole reason anyone goes to animation school, I would hope, is to get a job in the animation industry. So my dream was to work for Disney back in the day. And to this day, I've never worked for Disney. It's really weird. All these years I've been in animation, I never actually went to Disney and worked there. I've visited there many times, known a ton of people there, but I never really have worked there. So we have the producer show, and I show my film, and um, I, I have a lot of fun showing it. Did, I got a pretty good reception. I was I enjoyed the reaction it got. And I came out of the producer show, and uh, one of my friends said, hey, Butch, there's this producer. That's a big word in Hollywood, producer, right? Uh, this producer wants to talk to you about your film. I'm like, oh, gasp. Now, I have delusions of grandeur. I'm thinking, wow, this is going to be huge. This is going to be the next Star Wars movie. My film is going to become Star Wars, right? It's going to become the next Back to the Future movie. It's going to be it's going to be the hugest thing ever. No, this guy just wanted to talk to me because he wanted to let me know he was from Marvel Productions. And at the time, Marvel was producing animation in the San Fernando Valley in California. They had a studio called Marvel Productions, and they were doing cartoons and stuff. They were doing things like Muppet Babies, uh, X-Men, Spider-Man, and doing all kinds of stuff back then. I get talked to by this producer, and he asked me to show him my portfolio. So I show him my portfolio, and I actually end up getting a job at Marvel Productions. And the job I got, I think I'm going there to work on, you know, Spider-Man, Captain America, the Hulk, the X-Men. I'm all excited. My head's filled with superheroes. This is so cool because I love superheroes. I end up getting a job on My Little Pony. That's right. Oh! My Little Pony was the uh, show I got to work on. And this isn't the good My Little Pony that came out very recently in the last 10 years. No, no. This was the really bad My Little Pony that came out in 1986. And um, it doesn't look good. I, it, it's not, the stories aren't great. I'm not disparaging anyone who worked on it, but it just, all the pieces together didn't come together very well. It's not a really good, not a very well-remembered series. But anyway, so I was hired to be a character designer. And here's, here's a cautionary tale for all of you animation students out there. I was very good at character design. I was very good at one thing. That's what I was good at. So I'm hired to be a character designer. This is gonna be great. So I'm there for a week and I have to design a character and I got to design this guy, a little, I think it was a wizard guy, and I, I got to do what's called a turnaround. That's where you draw a character from the front, the side, the back, and even a three quarter front view so all the artists can see what the character looks like. So I do my character drawing and then the guy who hired me, now I'm only there for one week and I'm a character designer. In my head I'm Butch Hartman, character designer. Hi there, Butch Hartman, character designer, coming to you live from Marvel Studios. That's what I really thought I was. So this guy says, hey, we need some help in the storyboard department. I'd like you to go help out over there. 
Now, what would you do in this situation? I'm really good at character designing. I've done some animation of my own. I've done some teeny little storyboards on my own at college because I wasn't really working for anybody else. I was doing my own thing. But now I'm in an industry, I'm at a job, and they asked me to go help out with storyboards on My Little Pony. So I'd never really done a storyboard for anybody else before, let alone a studio, right? So I'm thinking, okay, I, I'm gonna have to do this because I didn't want to say I couldn't do it because I want to stay in the job. I'm getting a very nice paycheck. It's my dream come true. I uh, go to the storyboard department. They give me my first script. The reason you're storyboarding is you're taking the script someone's written and you're drawing it out. You're obviously, you guys know this. So I've got to draw out this My Little Pony script and it's very involved. And for some reason, back Back then, Marvel Productions insisted that every one of the My Little Pony characters be in every shot. Like every shot of this My Little Pony script that I got had every pony in it. And they were working with the toy company that was producing the My Little Pony series. They were making the toys for My Little Pony. They insisted all the ponies be everywhere. So you had like a million different ponies, like the same pony body, but a million different designs of the ponies. And so anyway, I gotta go draw all these ponies in every panel of this storyboard. And, I, and I've really never done a storyboard, let alone one with this many characters. I'm in way over my head. And to be quite honest with you, I'd never drawn this style of character before. So I was really good at doing characters that I could design on my own. And my cautionary tale is this, if you're an animation studio, Student. If you're an artist of any kind and you want to work in an industry where you're getting paid, learn how to do other things. Up your skill set. Become not just a character designer. Become a storyboard artist and a character designer together. Become a background artist. Become a writer as well. Become a color stylist. Get as many skills under your belt as you can so that when they ask you to help out in another department, man, you can do it all. You can do everything. That way you become cha-ching more valuable. So anyway, I'm doing this storyboard. One thing about storyboards, they're very labor intensive. There's a lot of panels, there's a lot of characters. If the script calls for the camera to be under the bed because the character's looking under the bed, or high up on a building looking down, or inside a mouse hole looking out, I mean, you need to know how to kind of draw that stuff, how to create a cinematic image, not just in your head, but how do you transfer it onto the storyboard page. That's what you gotta get good at as a storyboard artist. So. Not only wasn't I good at that, I couldn't do it quickly. And storyboards have this magic thing called a time limit. Look at the time! They need it by like three weeks. It's like you have three weeks to do the storyboard. So each panel was taking me about two days to do because of all the characters. So you're talking one panel for two days, second panel two days, that's four days. I've only got three weeks, that's 21 days. I'm, I'm dead if I don't speed up my process. So long story short, I finished this whole storyboard it looks terrible. The boss calls me in the office and he uh, explains to me in not so uncertain terms that uh, my services are no longer required. Thanks very much. You're fired. fired. You're, you're fired. I was fired. It was sad. Have you ever been fired from anything? Have you ever been asked to leave? Have you ever been told that we really don't need you around here anymore? It's a, a really crushing feeling. And I'm here to tell you that, yes, that feeling is crushing, it's sad, but you can get over it. It's all about the attitude and how you approach that situation. I could have wallowed in that for many, many days, months, and years, but I didn't. Fortunately for me, I was able to rally myself and realize, look, I came out here to do animation. I went to college for this for, for nearly three years. I have been wanting to do this my entire life. Just because I got fired doesn't mean there's not another job out there. So I ended up getting a job at another studio, at Ruby Spears Productions. And it was a really cool story. I had a really nice guy at Marvel Productions. He was an older guy. Uh, he was one of the producers. He didn't like the fact that I got fired by this other producer. He actually liked me. So he actually took me over to a couple of other studios as a friend, and we just kind of met other producers at other studios. I showed them my portfolio, and uh, they really loved it. They're like, wow, you know, this is great. One person liked it so much, they were gonna hire me, but they didn't have any jobs. So they sent me to another studio, which ended up being Ruby Spears Productions. You know them. They, uh, back in the 70s, they were the guys who created Scooby-Doo for Hanna-Barbera, Joe Ruby and Ken Spears. They started their own studio in the 70s. They made shows like Fang Face, Mighty Man and Yuck, the uh, Punky Brewster Show, Police Academy, the cartoon series. They did all these cool cartoons in the 70s. And so I got hired to work there. The horror of My Little Pony, of me getting fired from that, ended up being something really cool because I got this other job at Ruby Spears Productions and I wasn't put on storyboards there. 
they saw I could draw and they liked my concept work a lot. I had some conceptual little funny drawings that I'd done. And also while I was at that studio, whenever the writers were working, I would walk by and uh, I would sometimes hear what they were doing and I would kind of pop my head in. Maybe it was welcome or unwelcome, I don't know, but I'd say, hey, did you guys ever think of this? And I would kind of throw a joke in and they'd say, that's really funny. And so I started getting invited into the writer's room to help them write scripts. I took advantage of that new situation where I got to now help write scripts. And then Joe Ruby, who was again, the guy who created Scooby-Doo, he was always pitching shows to CBS NBC, ABC, and uh, he needed presentation artwork done all the time, like big posters done of the shows he was presenting. So I would help out on all that artwork as well, and that's how I learned how to do presentation art. That, ta that really taught me how to present cartoons myself. And so you see, one bad situation, although it was bad, it was temporary. It led to a much better situation where I learned a lot more about what I would end up doing later in my career. Isn't that cool? Very cool. Just because something bad happens to you one time doesn't mean it has to stay bad. Use that situation to your advantage. Learn from it, grow from it, take advantage of it, and make things better. Make yourself, like I said, take your skills, make them better. So that won't happen again. Because now if someone says, hey, can you come do this storyboard? I can do it. If someone says, can you come and draw this background? I can do it. If someone says, can you come and design this character? Yes, I can do all that stuff. It took years to learn. But now I'm much more well-rounded. I feel much more confident when someone asks me to do a project. And you guys can do the same thing too. It won't happen overnight. It's not instantaneous. I wish it was instantaneous. Do we have any instantaneous effects? We could, like an instant thing? Wow. So that's my story about getting fired from my very first ever animation job. What'd you guys think? Would you have done what I did? Would you have gone and done the storyboard or would you have run out the door when they asked you to do that? Or would you have done a better job than me? Would yeah, Maybe you would have. Maybe you're just better at storyboards right now than I was at that time. Are you really good at several different things? If you're not, like I said, please, start working on your skill level, get your skills. Even if you can't do something now, you know, do a storyboard. Even if no one ever sees it, it's practice for you. You don't have to show it to anybody, but eventually maybe it'll be good enough. You can start showing it to people and getting paid for it. That's the cool part about it. This is all about how to get your career in animation going and make things better. Okay. If you've got any other questions, you know, I'm here to answer them. Leave the questions down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And should I make more videos like this? Do you guys want to hear more stories about my career in animation and what led me to become like a producer and a creator and all that stuff? Do you guys want to hear more about my journey through the animation industry? Let me know down in the comment section below. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And you know what? Keep building yourself up. Keep working on those skills. You guys can do it. I promise you. It might not be easy now, but it's going to get easier. So stay with it. Keep the faith. You guys can do it. Have a great rest of your day. And don't forget, art gives you power. You use it wisely. Hey, Heart fans. Subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Noob Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop.